stick figure Rachel Gendron. Oh my god. What the fuck is wrong with her? Oh my god. How's everybody doing tonight? I moved out to the country recently. First thing that I did when I moved out to the country, I built a compost pile. Second thing I did, listen to my neighbors complain about my compost pile. They said, this is going to attract animals. I said, that's good because I'm trying to start a zoo. I'm going to monetize my property. <laughs> the third thing that I did when I moved to the country is I bought a solar panel. And it's just strong enough to power my wife's vibrator and our espresso machine. <laughs> I pointed towards the east and we call it the morning grind. <laughs> <laughs> love living in the country, love it. You know what I love about the country? The permanent yard sale. You know what I'm talking about? You drive it through the country, you see a house. Looks like it got hit by a tornado. Shit is all over the yard and it is all for sale all of the time. <laughs> Because you never know when you're going to be driving through Standish and you're going to need a cheap, chipped, crystal candlestick. And you're going to be like, oh, this would be perfect to hold mom's ashes. <laughs> if only she'd finally die. <laughs> <laughs> Grocery prices are out of control, aren't they? Oh my God, prices are up. They're out of control. And I'm just in the toilet paper aisle, and I just need some toilet paper, and toilet paper prices are out of control. You know, they got toilet paper, it says four rolls equals eight rolls with a two-ply roll. Eight rolls equals 16 rolls with a basket weave. 16 rolls equals 32 rolls of toilet paper with a waffle mitt. Usa Regio compara cool Olympia! And I'm like, I didn't know I needed to be a bilingual mathematician to take a shit in this town. God damn. <laughs> Wife told me to get a job. She says, you gotta get a job, Timmy, right? So I go down and apply it where I get my groceries. Cumbies, right? Like, and like, here's the thing, first of all, you like, you shouldn't even need to apply to a job at a convenience store in this job market. You should just show up, put on the name tag, and help the next person in line. Right? Like, and then they, they, like, they ask for my emergency contact. I'm like, it's 911, fuckface. Like, like how... Why do I need to list that shit? It's like, I can't imagine that the fucking Cumbies manager's gotta go stumble through his cluttered office looking for Timothy's job application. Oh, I wonder who he listed. Oh, no, it's 911. Memorize it. <laughs> I love a good drug smuggling story, don't you? Drug smuggling. Oh, I love a good drug smuggling story. But not the tunnels. I don't like the tunnels. I don't like the Pablo Escobar stuff. Like, I like the local shit. Like, the things that you read about in the newspaper locally. Like, you open it up and it's like, oh, they, like, because it's so much more relatable than half those kids I went to high school with. You know, like, they, they, you, they, you open it up and it's like, oh, that's, that's Chelsea. Like, she was in my homeroom. <laughs> Nice kid. I mean, a bit of a wild streak. I mean, but I, I love, I love like the local shit, like where people like swallow balloons, like you know, when they're trying to ram some shit in their asshole, like. Like, recently there was an Augusta transient discovered trying to smuggle twelve and a half grams of methamphetamines in her vagina. And that's a creative way to smuggle in the body, you know? And then you see the picture of her in the paper. And it, like she looks so sad and her mascara's running. Like, 
And like she hasn't slept in three weeks and it's fucking hilarious because that's what vagina meth does to you, apparently. Like I've never taken crystal meth in my vagina. But I don't judge at all. I've done dumb shit, right? Like I've done dumb shit, right? Like at one point, I tried to smuggle 12 and a half beers in my body past the sobriety checkpoint. <laughs> and my crafty ruse was detected. Keep doing what you're doing, though. They say that. They say, keep doing what you're doing. That's good advice, right? But you got to take it in context. Keep doing what you're doing. It's like, he, like, like you're at the dentist's office, and the dentist is like, oh, you have a beautiful set of choppers in there. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, but like, you're a compulsive arsonist, and you leave the dentist office and set three buildings on fire, and it's like, well, like, the dentist told me I had permission to set fire to the textile mill. I had permission from the dentist. Just keep it in context. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tramp stamp. <laughs> I have a back tattoo. I have a tramp stamp. Yeah, I do. I have a tramp stamp. It's a back tattoo. It's on my back. It's on my lower back. Yeah, I will show you after the show. It's a, it's, a, it's a badass tramp stamp, though. It's my full name, Timothy. It's written in the golden hair of a pony's tail as it's leaping across a majestic rainbow. I mean, it's it's beautiful. I mean, like. But I got the tramp stamp back in the mid '90s, back when tramp stamps and suicide was cool. You know, like. <laughs> And like I escaped from the mid 90s with nothing but a tramp stamp. You know, like I wanted like a forked tongue and gauged ears, you know, like I wanted that shit. Like I wanted a I wanted a scrotum ring actually. Like I wanted a big fucking scrotum ring, like at least a pound and a half. Like just a just a swinging fucking two and a half pound scrotum ring, you know, back in the mid 90s. You know, but I was a teenager and like nobody's gonna Nobody's gonna touch a teenager's scrotum in the mid-90s to pierce it. Like, nobody's gonna touch it, no one's gonna look at it. Like, no one's gonna look at a troubled teen scrotum in the mid-90s. Like, scrotum in the mid-90s, like, girls are fascinated by it, but it looks like a, it looks like a glistening wolf spider's egg sack underneath a damp porch. You know, like, like the girls are fascinated, but the, the, they're more likely just to hit it with a stick, you know, like. And I have pierced my own ears with like a needle and an ice cube, you know, and I'm like, like I, and that didn't hurt, and like, if you know anything about the scrotum, like the testicles are extremely sensitive, you tap them, that hurts, but the bag itself, far more durable. You can pull that out like a bat wing, like, like until, like, you can, until it becomes translucent, you can read through it. Like you can, you can hold it up to the sun and burn ants with it. Like that shit doesn't hurt a bag. What does hurt a bag is to drive a galvanized roofing nail through it into a stump because you're trying to self-pierce your own scrotum. And that's where I was in the mid '90s with my scrotum nailed to a stump in my dad's coal shit. <laughs> and you might say, oh, oh, Timmy, you might, you were a little confused, right? And I was, I was, I was stumped. Yeah. 